your kids ain't shit unless you properly train them. And I use that word specifically. Train them so they can successfully navigate through life. But most parents don't do that. They don't give a fuck. And if you fail to train your kid properly, you fail both as a parent and as a human being. See, to most parents, having a kid is an ego booster. To quote Tom Likas, even though I disagree with him on many issues, it's having a Xerox version of yourself. And that's exactly what it is. But when it comes to denial, men are the biggest hypocrites of all. Every time one of my so-called friends tells me, hey, you know, you should have a kid of your own, it's a great feeling, I'm like, well, you know what, if it's such a great feeling, I'm just going to adopt one. No, 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 you need to have one of your own. I'm like, wait a minute, is that just an ego boost? See, that's a litmus test right there. It's not about loving kids, it's not about raising kids, it's about having a Xerox version of yourself. It's an ego thing, and Mafia don't let anyone tell you different. Now, in this particular video, I'm going to focus mainly on fathers, because most men believe that when a kid pops out, the job is done. They produce a, a copy of themselves, and it's over with. Bullshit. It's only the beginning, because you need to train the kid. But to most parents, especially these days, it's all about having fun for the first couple of months. You know, when everyone wants to take a picture with the baby, put it up on uh, Facebook and get all that attention, likes and, you know, all that kind of shit. But when it wears off and now the kid is all news, the first thing these parents do, they dump them to their own parents. So now the kid has been raised by its grandparents. And that's where the trouble starts because old people are not equipped to raise small children. Because otherwise, if they were, they will also be able to make them. And we know that's not happening. They just don't have enough energy for it. And as a result, the kid is completely neglected. And to further illustrate this, just take a look at Japan. Traditionally in Japan, kids are usually raised by their grandparents. And we can see how that turned out. I mean, yes, Japan is technologically most advanced country in the world. But to what good is that when you don't even produce enough kids for replacement rate? The other scenario is they throw kids into this, you know, kindergartens and they are basically raised by people who don't give a shit. They're only interested in keeping those kids safe and sound until their parents pick them up. That's all there is to it. After that, they start going to elementary school and they are basically then being raised by the state. Again, parents have nothing to do with it. They don't even see their kids. They're only there to, you know, drop them off at school and then pick them up later. And that's it. 99% of parents are completely detached from their children, yet they are surprised when they hear about their daughter sucking dicks at age of 13. Or that their son is shoplifting or doing some type of drugs. Like, how is that possible? I raised a good kid. Motherfucker, you didn't raise him to begin with and you have no idea what kind of kid you have. Sure, you take every opportunity to put its picture up on your Facebook profile, Instagram, whatever the fuck, but you're not the one who raised it or trained it. So now, the kid is out of control, it hates your guts, you hate its guts, because most parents, when the kid reaches a certain age, they start regretting having kids in the first fucking place. They're thinking like, oh man, if I can just go back in time, I would put on that condom. I would never impregnate that bitch. And the same thing goes for kids. Kids hate their fucking parents. It's no longer fun. It's no longer a cute little baby that everybody wants to take a picture with. And it's exactly this type of negligence that produced these morons and sensitive SJW snowflakes because they were not properly trained by their parents to take on the world. Alexander the Great was only 16 years old when he took over the command of Macedonian army and began his conquest. And guess what? He didn't have a computer or cell phone or anything like that, but he had the attention of his parents, especially his father. His father, King Philip, made sure that his son is raised and trained properly. But modern-day parents are not concerned about raising their kids. It's everybody else's problem. No, it's your fucking problem. You made it, you fucking raised it. And that's why I believe that Muslims will eventually take over the West because they got better structure, they're on code, they know how to properly train their kids and I'll give you an example of it. When a Muslim dude wants to make himself famous, what does he do? He blows some shit up. 
On the other hand, when a Western cock wants to make himself famous, he goes on social media and makes total ass out of himself. Hey, look at me, I'm PewDiePie, and check it out, I'm rubbing my ass against my computer monitor, and I also have this airheaded entitled, but also very cute bitch for a girlfriend, but don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, or they go on reality show and trying to fuck every slut in that place. While the other guy is thinking, hmm, let me get those 72 virgins up there by blowing motherfuckers to smithereens. So let me check online to see if there's anything about how to make explosives out of household items or how to make gunpowder. Now Mafia, I'm not generalizing, I'm not saying every Muslim is like that because I know it's not true. I'm just trying to illustrate the difference between radical groups. On the one hand, we have people who are focused and ready to go all the way. On the other hand, we got a bunch of thirsty ass cocks always in a friend zone playing White Knights and Captain Saberholes. Now, Mafia, let me throw in some game. These assholes in the friend zone share the same type of thinking. They believe that if they stick around long enough, whenever the woman they're after breaks up with her boyfriend, they'll be first in line to fuck her. Sadly for them, the shit doesn't work that way. Well, it sometimes it happens, but it's usually 1 in 20. The fact of the matter is, every woman knows exactly where she's going to go to get that revenge sex. And it's usually the boyfriend's best friend. <laughs> and like I've said, there are cases where the guy in the friend zone gets lucky, but exception doesn't make the rule. Now, Mafia, tell me, when was the last time you saw a Muslim male feminist? The shit don't exist because they are playing chess while western cocks are playing checkers. Sure, they are protective of their women, but they ain't gonna turn themselves into she-males. Because that's exactly what these male feminists are. They're not even in a friend zone. They're honorary women. They believe their ass pipe is some type of honorary vagina. And that's why I have way more respect for Muslims than I have for these western cocks. And again, I'm not supporting terrorism or radical Islam, but ask yourself, when a push comes to shove, who would you want on your side? Someone who's ready to go the distance or someone who thinks of himself as an honorary woman? This is Top Dollar signing off.